Um, so again, so thanks a lot to Joe. Thanks a lot to, to Honest Reporting. Uh, and thanks again for everybody here that, that came. Um, I tried to give everybody a speaking part as much as I could. Uh, I apologize for those that I didn't manage to, but it's, uh, it's a, is, as, uh, just as a history-wise, um, I started the has pretty much as a joke. I, uh, it was meant to be just, you know, okay, an awards show, just as, a, as a, an excuse to be able to give uh, recognition to some of the best bloggers, tweeters, uh, Facebookers, everything that was out there. Um, but as it went on, people took it very seriously, and it turned into essentially a real awards show, as you see right now. Um, and I really, I couldn't be more thrilled because the this is what we're trying to do. The whole point is not only to celebrate the people that actually do the work that you know, the, you know, the behind-the-scenes work that are that helps make um, you know Israel to be able to fight the bad guys in Israel, to be able to give the, the true story of, of what Israel is and what's, what's going on over here, to be able to give it to the world, which is, a, I mean, it's really a, uh, it's, it's a, a sacred mission that we all do. Um, but it's also, a lot of it is also to be able to give more, not just recognition, but also to give publicity to some of those of us that other people might not have heard of. It's really meant to virtually, when it was started originally, it was meant to virtually connect everybody to let people hear, oh, I never heard of this blog before, I never heard of this person before, let me check them out. Now we have an opportunity to actually meet each other in person. So uh, nobody could be more thrilled than I am about how well this is working out. So thank you very much for all of this um, and for really everybody for coming. Um, we're going to just get moving right along because we do have a hard stop at 8 o'clock. Um, uh, and I do want to again mention that um, no photos or pictures of me um, that, uh, you know, that will be uh, publicized anywhere um, for now. You know, maybe, you know, whether I'm ever going to come out is, uh, is another story. But at the moment, uh, I'm still anonymous, even though you're seeing me here. So I know it's weird, but that's the way things go. Um, but nevertheless, so that's, uh, you know, that's the, the main housekeeping thing. Uh, but we're going to get going right now to the, uh, to the first uh, of the awards of this tonight. The first award that we're going to be do doing is the presentation for best article. And the presenter of this award is Yisrael Maydad, um, who is, the, of course, the blogger at the Right Word blog. He directs the educational programming and information resources at the Begin Heritage Center. And he has written articles for major newspapers, including the LA Times and Interna International Her Herald Tribune. And once he took me on a very memorable tour of the Harabayat, which you can see on YouTube, and uh, where we didn't have people screaming at us, Allah Akbar, amazingly. And uh, but it was, uh, and it really is, uh, and it's one of the, it's really the only English language real-time tour you can see of the Harabayat without going yourself. So it's actually for a very, it's, it's uh, highly recommended that people go and check it out. But uh, without further ado, we have Yisrael Meidad to present the uh, the presentation for the best article. make a uh, first statement on the personal nature. I have never won a Hasby Award. <laughs> um, the award is going to Kay Wilson. She had a November 24th blog post article slash dash, The Rage Less Traveled. Um, I was asked to prepare something, but of course I didn't. And since it's only limited to three minutes, and I don't want to ruin it for everybody else by taking up anybody else's time, and then everybody down, you know, the tenth person down the line wants to speak for 15 minutes, uh, I'm going to do it short. Uh, first of all, um, since I've been in the business a long time, I'm very proud to be connected both in whatever sense I am both to honest reporting and, of course, to someone who you can't take his picture. Um, if I block him out, you can take a picture of me. That's great. Okay? Here's the award. And here's the award. I want to say, I want to say, first of all, that blogging and interconnecting and making a collective effort, even though I'm very far from socialism, 
is a very important thing because we don't have too much power because of our natural gene, gene pool, which says split as much as possible. You know, that's a synagogue I don't pray in. And since we have the Father with us, for those Jews who converted, uh, that's the church I don't pray in. So we've got everything going here for us. Uh, so I, I'm glad to be part of this. The specifics that I picked out of Kay's article were two phrases. I even locked them in yellow, so it's not that, that I'm cheating. I really read it. Misplaced and dangerous morality. There are people around us who presume to be moral, and their entire value system, their entire world view, is corrupted, is wrong, and leads to evil. Our neutral friends, not to mention those on the other side, simply refuse to recognize that that could be true because we're all nice people. So I want to strengthen Kay's message on that point. The second point, she phrased it, righteous rage. Now, for some of you who are here who know my background, having joined Beitar in 1964 and physically beaten up anti-Semites on the streets of New York and in back rooms, there is a full justification for righteous rage. You could say that I was only 17 years old at the time, so perhaps I should have been a better behaved person. But I think I was coming from the right place. And there is a need to be angry at those things that are wrong and to channel those into the best ways and methods that we, with the tools that we have, whether you want to call it internet, whether you want to call it blogging, whether you call it lecturing, and for those who don't know, I'm going to be talking to a group of non-Jewish students from the University of Irvine this Friday, and I hope not to go too much into a rage. That's it. I want to thank everybody for coming, and of course, ask Kay to come up here and take a photograph with me as I present, as we do it on television. Please do not trip coming up the stairs. <laughs> Besides the fact that this lady is a very brave person, which is also something very good. Ten more seconds, wait, ten more seconds for those who didn't get out the cameras in time. <laughs> My email address is known to you all. Please send me all the pictures. Thank you very much, Kay. Thank you, uh, Israel. Uh, thank you very much. Um, thank you, Elder. Thank you, Honest Reporting. I'm very surprised. I'm firstly surprised to still be alive after being hacked up 13 times with machete. And I'm also surprised because most of you I follow on Twitter and your scathing, blistering comments. And I look at you now, you're like little pampered children. <laughs> so I don't know where all that comes from, but I, I imagine it comes from the rage less traveled. And uh, just one word that I thought about because I didn't know what I was going to say, but uh, I live in a rad due to post-trauma. That probably doesn't help. But when I come up to uh, Jerusalem, even though I was a tour guide, I still need my GPS. And I thought, how do I get to the building? And I put it on, you know, one of those app things. And it suddenly opened up. And all I saw was the whole damn world, you know, and just this little pulsating blue blob somewhere in Asia. So I got my hands on the screen and I, I, I pushed it out and more and more and, and until it came to Jerusalem and then it came to uh, near Ahavia, and then it came to where we are. So then I had this uh, eureka moment. And I think, not to say that it's missing in people's advocacy, because what you do, I'm all in admiration of you. I, I didn't know uh, I'd be in this world. But I think one thing that my experience and my writing has added is uh, the micro, as opposed to the macro. Meaning, what I experienced watching somebody chopped up before my eyes. And what that does to me, and I know Arnold can identify, 
you know, and then the goodness that's come out of it, me hiding Muhammad Suabi at the risk of my own life, and meeting Yahya Mahmed, another up-and-coming Israeli Arab advocate, and the goodness that's come out of it. And I think the only thing I could say to conclude is we all go through bad things. Maybe not everybody a machete attack, but I think the other side, they're so full of pathos, and it speaks to people. And if we can grab something that moves us, that speaks to our own humanity and somehow inject it into what we do when it's appropriate, I think it can make for a better world and it gives me a lot of hope. Thank you very much.